the story was we were supposed to actually produce someone else on AM Records, uh, a girl named Sharon Bryant, who used to be with Atlantic Star. And we were big Atlantic Star fans, and we were like, oh, yeah, we'd love to do the record. So there's a rumor that the Control album is really what we were going to do for Sharon Bryant, which is absolutely not true. I mean, we, obviously we would have did a different record because we always tried to tailor the records to fit the artists we were doing. So um, basically they sent us the roster and they just said, uh, John McClain, who was the A&R person there, he said, uh, anybody on our roster you'd like to do? And we said, we want to do Janet. And he said, well, you want to do three or four songs? We said, no, we want to do the whole album. He was like, really? Okay, cool. <laughs> because nobody was checking for Janet at that point. But we just felt something. We felt like there, she had, first of all, just talent. She was a great, had a great voice, but she also had a great attitude. And we thought that the attitude was never being brought out of her. And we thought as producers and writers, we could do that. So we had, we, first we had a meeting with Janet and her dad and everybody. And they played her, like, the, whatever the last record we had done, which I think was Heat of Heat by Patty Austin, which scared her to death <laughs> because it was a record we did for Quincy Jones, had strings and it was all big and, you know. And she was like, I'm not sure that I want my record to sound like this. And we were like, no, 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 it's not going to sound, no, I don't know why they're playing this. This has nothing to do with what we're going to do. And so her dad says, y'all are from Minneapolis. And we said, yeah. Prince is from Minneapolis. I said, yeah. Don't have my daughter sounding like Prince. <laughs> okay, Mr. Jackson, you got it. But you know, I mean, you know, we we got you. So anyway, she came to town. She came to Minneapolis. No bodyguards, no nothing. She brought a friend of hers, Melanie, her friend. Uh, we rented her a car to drive, a little Chevy Blazer. She had to find her way around. This before GPS, so there was maps and all kinds of you know Stone Age stuff. And uh, she had to find her way to the studio, find her way to the hotel, and all those kinds of things. And um, we didn't go in the studio for like the first four or five days. We just hung out, went to the movies, went to the club, you know, went to the lake, and you know, just hung out, right? And uh, about five days in, she said, when are we going to actually start working? And we said, oh, we've been working. And we showed her the lyrics to control. And she started reading the lyrics, and she said, well, wait, this is what we've been talking about. And we said, exactly. And she said, so whatever we talk about, that's what we're going to write about? Like, yeah. And she said, oh. Okay, and it was like a light bulb went off in her head because nobody had ever asked her what she wanted to write about or sing about. Well, first of all, nobody asked her to write. Nobody asked her what she wanted to sing about. They just gave her songs, and we were like, no, 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 you got to be part of the process here, and that's how the control record started, and uh, and obviously ended up being a you know a very pivotal record in all of our careers.